So Google's new image model actually feels like a glimpse of AGI. We need to talk about it. So Google are essentially testing a new version of Nano Banana 2, and this is an AI image model. However, I think it's actually a step towards AGI because the AI is doing things that previous models simply can't. And in order for an AI model to be able to do what Nano Banana 2 is doing successfully, it has to be able to reason like a human. And you'll see as the video gets on why that starts to become more and more true. So take a look at some of these examples because I'm sure as I'm surprised, you'll be too. For, you know, reference to understand how great Nano Banana is, I'm gonna walk through four different examples that show four different capabilities that truly exemplify just how good the model is. So this is a prompt called generate a screenshot of a Windows 11 desktop with Google Chrome open, showing a YouTube thumbnail of Mr. Beast on youtube.com. And here we can see that this is image at four. This was Google's old model. And we can see that it doesn't really look that good. The only thing that we can say about this image is that it got the Windows desktop pretty decent, but upon further inspection, and remember, this is important because in a moment, I'm gonna show you what Nano Banana is able to do. And then you're gonna be really surprised. And as the video goes on, you're gonna get more and more surprised. And I've left the crazy ones until the end. We can see that, you know, this is not Mr. Beast. The text on these areas are really, really jumbled and mumbled and some of the images just don't make sense. Now, if we look to GPT image one, this is significantly better. Some of the icons don't make sense, but it's definitely a lot better. The only thing is that it doesn't look like a real person's dashboard. It looks more so like, I guess you could say an AI generated image. In this video, I'm also going to include C-Dream because that is a model that I've heard a lot about and people seem to believe that this model is pretty good and it is on several areas, but when it comes to things like this, it's just not. Now this is Nano Banana 2. This looks like a screenshot from someone's actual desktop. I wouldn't be able to tell if this desktop was actually a screenshot or actual, you know, AI generated. Now, the only thing I think that maybe gives it away is that there's not views underneath this, but there's no obvious giveaway that this is an AI generated image. Now, this is by far the most tame example of how good Nano Banana 2 is. Why don't you take a look at this? And this is the craziest thing that is, you know, existing online at the moment. I truly believe. So someone took a piece of, you know, pieces of ripped up paper. They wrote something on them, okay? And the original piece of paper is not this, but it does say this. But this is what Nano Banana was able to do with this, you know, scrumbled, jumbled pieces of paper. It clearly says the cat balanced delicately on the edge of the wooden fence. Nano Banana was able to basically, I don't know how on earth it was able to do this, but convert these pieces of ripped notes back into an original image. And the reason that this is crazy is because this just combines so many different things. It's combining visual pattern matching with semantic understanding. It's not just aligning the torn edges, which it could be done doing, it's understanding what the sentence is supposed to say. So by identifying the fragments of letters and the word order, it's reconstructing the logical text of the cat balanced delicately on the edge of the wooden fence. And it shows comprehension at both visual and linguistic levels. And this is physical reconstruction from incomplete data. The pieces were irregularly torn, partially overlapping and rotated. And the AI inferred the correct spatial order and orientation to restore the note, demonstrating an eternal model of how objects fit together in the real world. And you have to understand how important that is. An AI being able to have an internal model of how torn objects fit together in the real world is crucial for, you know, having systems that exhibit human-like intelligence. Now, there's also cross-modal reasoning and text and geometry. To succeed, the AI had to merge two domains of intelligence, visual reasoning and which is, you know, the, the matching of the lines, the handwriting alignment, the paper edges with the language reasoning, predicting sentence structure and coherence. And this synthesis is what humans use in puzzle solving or forensic reconstruction. And it's very rare for, you know, AI systems to perform simultaneously these things successfully. And of course there's contextual closure. And even if parts of the letter were missing, AI inferred the rest using linguistic probability and visual clues, which is the hallmark of higher level reasoning not just matching pixels, but understanding meaning. So it's crazy. The AI performed physical reconstruction, assembling the pieces, demonstrating semantic reasoning, understanding what the text says, and combining vision, language, and spatial logic seamlessly, which is why Nano Banana is, I think, a little bit bigger than just an image, you know, editing tool. This means that Google are clearly working on, you know, higher order things over there. They're, they're really smart over there. So, I mean, if you're wondering how did other labs fare, I mean, I put it into Claude, Claude's visual reasoning, unfortunately, it didn't work. It says the delicate balance of modern life depends only on the caffeinated, which is, 
it's pretty funny to actually read that statement. I mean, I guess there's some truth to that, but um, you know, it's it's not accurate. We can see that. And then of course I decided to use Gemini 2.5 Pro and, and Gemini 2.5 Pro actually managed to get this right. The only thing that it didn't manage to do was it didn't manage to reconstruct the image. I don't think Nano Banana is working, you know, as well. So it's pretty cool that it was able to, you know, just get it based off of just the visual reasoning. And then of course I tried a grok. It reasoned for 11 minutes, 11 minutes and 40 seconds to assemble the original message. And the final message that it put was the delicate balance of nature on the fence. And this was incorrect. And then I also tried GPT-5, which is where assemble the original message from these and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And it thought for five minutes, I decided to use GPT-5's highest thinking model because usually, okay, and this is where we get into some, I don't want to say conspiracy theory, but just hear me out for a second. This is GPT-5, which is supposed to be the extended thinking model, which is supposed to be the most intelligent model. And it got it wrong. It reasoned for five minutes. However, I do know that from my personal use of GPT-5, what tends to happen is the models tend to over-reason and overthink things, potentially missing the main point because those models are trained, you know, in a sense that like they're trained to just see problems as multi-step and some problems are only a few short steps. So what I actually tried to do was I tried to use a, you know, smaller model, which is O3. And surprisingly, O3 came a lot closer to the original answer. And the original answer is the cat balanced delicately on the edge of the wooden fence. And that was remarkably closer. Now, O3, if you aren't familiar with this model, this is an earlier reasoning model produced by OpenAI. So how is it that the earlier reasoning model produced by OpenAI surpasses GPT-5? And like I said, I think it's because if you reason for too long on certain problems, the model just overthinks it and it really doesn't help in certain scenarios. So I think that should be just a note for you guys. If you're ever using reasoning models, try to not use extended thinking on everything because it's going to overthink the issue. Now, there's more images here. And one of the key things that I saw was, you know, something like this. And this was crazy because there was something else written on another whiteboard and I'm going to get to that in a moment. But this is Nano Banana writing clearly on a whiteboard and all of the text is legible and it's solving this. This is absolutely incredible. It read, understood and solved a visually presented problem, complex calculus problem on a whiteboard that's combining mathematical reasoning, spatial awareness and visual reasoning all in one task. And that's crazy. It's solving an integral and this integral requires advanced calculus, specifically trigonomic substitution. And the model didn't just output the final answer. It performed the full derivation line by line as a human mathematician would on a whiteboard. It used the correct substitution strategy. And this isn't a memorized pattern. It's a demonstration of procedural understanding in symbolic math. And it wrote it in a spatially organized and legible. So this is crazy. This is really crazy. I mean, the implications are extremely profound. We can look at more examples here. We've got, you know, Nano Banana 1. This was a prompt going around. Disassemble the toy into components of the antenna, the body, the head, the hands, necks, and the wheels. This is Nano Banana 1. It doesn't do too bad of a job there. I don't think that's, you know, too bad. The only problem is some of the annotations aren't correct. We can see that, you know, what is the box? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be the hand. But if we look also at GPT image 1, uh, we can see that the hands, it, it, it does its best. It doesn't do too bad, to be honest with you guys, but it doesn't do, you know, completely everything here. But of course, with Nano Banana 2, we can see that this is almost, almost flawless. I mean, I think the only thing maybe wrong about this is that there is one object here, which is this little cube, and I'm not sure where that is in the robot. So we have to understand that this is surprising because oftentimes there would be individuals like Gary Marcus that would say, okay, why is it that I can ask an AI to reason about, you know, spatial intelligence and it's not able to do that. And often they would cite things like this, which is GPT image one, clearly failing on several different tasks. But, you know, this is impressive because once again, the reason I've shown you guys these different examples, because each one of these showcases a different way that the model is acting, which is remarkably impressive. This, this one is showing, you know, true 3D spatial reasoning and physical decomposition. The AI is not only recognizing what the toy is, but understanding how it's built, what parts it makes up, how those parts fit together in real space. And that's kind of remarkable because it's identifying distinct functional parts, the antenna, you know, the head, the neck, the body, the arms, the wheels. And it means that this has structural understanding of how composite objects are forms, not just visual segmentation. Executing a functional disassembly is, you know, the difference and it's not random separation. And most image models can separate shapes, but Nano Banana 2 is organizing the pieces in a mechanically meaningful way. I mean, 
it's incredible. And think about it for a second. To perform this correctly, the model needed to simulate gravity, balance, and real world assembly logic, understanding which parts can be unscrewed or detached, or how they relate specifically or spatially once removed. This goes far beyond static image recognition. This is a step towards mechanical intuition. And even though the input is a 2D image, AI essentially mentally rotated and disassembled the object in three, dis three dimensions, deciding how components would appear once separated and laid out, which is something that requires implicit 3D modeling and planning, bridging perception and manipulation, which is actually crucial for robotics manufacturing. And like I said before, exhibiting, you know, human level AI, which means that this is, you know, a level above. Now, once again, this is again, a example of Nano Banana 2 solving something. Once again, the text rendering is incredible. I also saw uh, a company who had access to Nano Banana, they were doing, you know, responses of how you can, you know, use Nano Banana and peep users were able to submit their prompts. I saw this one. This was a really long prompt, long winded prompt. And the image on the right, I don't see a single thing that would tell me that this is AI generated. If you showed me this image and said, uh, what do you think of this image? I would have said, okay, that graphic designer is pretty good. You know, it's clearly a real person. It's a photo shoot. They've got the blocks. They've got, you know, the typography. And I mean, Honestly, this is pretty, pretty surprising what we can do here because you have to understand that there is multiple different layers of text. There's multiple different fonts. There are multiple different colors, shading. There is a lot going on and it's very easy for AI to get this wrong. However, this is Nano Banana 2. Now, take a look at Nano Banana 1. If we look, uh, you might have to zoom in on your phone or whatever device you're on. You can see M the nutritionist. This text is messy. This text here, there's small areas where the text is messy. There's also, you know, areas here reshaped is spelt wrong. You know, so far, this is actually not that bad. I've got to be honest, like if you were a designer, you would easily be able to, you know, just add some text here. But the point is, is that compare that image, Nano Banana 1 to this image. I mean, it's incredible, like genuinely incredible. Like I think, I think this is it. I think this is the peak where it's like, okay, that's it. Like there is no more improvements that the model can make because how do you improve on this? I don't see anything wrong with it. Everything is perfect. Like there's no gloss skin. There is no text, you know, failure. There is no, uh, you know, oddly rendered things in the, in the object. I mean, of course the prompt is really good, but it just goes to show how good it is at instruction following as well. And then of course we can also see other models. So I tried to see what other models, you know, had done and we can see the ideogram three. This is a good model, but when it comes to text generation, it's pretty tough. We can see that, you know, the text here doesn't really work that well. The top text does do okay, but not as well as Nano Banana. We can see that Sea Dream is pretty good, surprisingly good, honestly. Like Sea Dream was one that was really, really surprising. The only thing I would say about Sea Dream is that when we look at this user's face, it does look AI generated. So I'm guessing that maybe this one does have small, small, but then again, you could just regenerate this. And this was only one generation. So I think this one is still good, but the graphics don't look as good as this right here. Like this image on the right, like the typography, the font, everything just, just screams like a human created it. Like, whereas with this one, it's like, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Then of course we've got GPT image one on the right hand side, and you can just pause and, you know, look for yourself at all the small details. It's definitely still, still pretty good, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, a little bit more AI generated. And honestly, I do think that this one is pretty decent when we look at GPT image one, but the point I'm trying to make guys is that compared to nano banana, it's just 10% better in a way that really just makes all the difference. Now, when we get onto this benchmark, this one is pretty crazy because this prompt um, is, is pretty crazy because it says a clean, realistic whiteboard written with neatly written Amharic text and black marker. The handwriting should look natural and clear, centered on the board, focus on the accurate text rendering and the sharp detail. So we can really, you know, if you pause and you look at every single character, it's pretty one-to-one, -one. like it's pretty one-to-one. -one. There is, you know, barely any mistakes at all. And like it, it's it's basically one-to-one, -one. Like, like Nano Banana is perfect when it comes to this kind of rendering, which is surprising because this is extremely difficult for most AI image models. This is accurate multilingual, you know, handwriting synthesis. And this matters because, you know, accurate non-Latin script rendering, which is Amharic, which is pretty crazy. It's a complex system with hundreds of glyphs and most diffusion models like, you know, mid journey and other image, you know, models fail miserably with such scripts because they blur, invent symbols and output gibberish. And this benchmark is essentially showing perfect orthography and consistent glyph shapes, meaning that the model's tokenizer and visual rendering pipeline actually understands the non-Latin Unicode, 
at a sub glyph level, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. And this prompt describes spatial and aesthetic constraint, which is, you know, centered, neatly written on a whiteboard. The model not only drew legible text, but it also aligned it compositionally with photorealistic context, the marker, the board, the reflections, and that strong evidence of world model coherence, connecting linguistic structure, object layout, and lighting realism. So you have to understand that this is a model showing, you know, fine grained linguistic rendering, photorealistic spatial reasoning simultaneously, something that was nearly impossible for image generators even a year ago. I mean, like really, really, really start to grasp your head around just how impressive that is. Now, once again, the comparisons are coming in. Take a look at GPT image one. It does try, but it also does fail. We can see that, you know, multiple times, if we look at just the first three characters, the, you know, as you get to the second character and the third character, things start to, you know, look like not what they should be. Once again, Nano Banana one just completely fails. Uh, C Dream, it just also completely fails. And I didn't bother trying any more other image models because Mid Journey doesn't even render text really. So they just don't care about text at all. The only image models that really do care about text is Google and GPT Image One. Now, once again, we're gonna go into another benchmark that is really impressive because I think you need to understand this one. So this one was draw a line for the ball's correct path. And this is very impressive. Like very, very, very impressive. You should be bullish on Google because this shows the ability of a model to predict the, you know, the correct physical trajectory of a falling object in a simulated environment. So this is incredible. This is not just understanding physics. This is, you know, the model not just recognizing shapes, it's predicting motion. Nano Banana 2 correctly inferred the curved path the model would take after multiple bounces, which requires an internal understanding of gravity, momentum, collision, angles, and it's, you know, outperforming larger models in reasoning precision. This is this is really this is really crazy when you think about it because look at Nano Banana 1. This is pretty hilarious. I'm not gonna lie. Like it literally just draws a straight line down into this. I used GPT-5 reasoning. It, you know, downloaded the image, wrote it a bunch of times, you know, added some JSON marker on it. And then we can see it ends up somehow in the one on the right. But Nano Banana 2 is pretty simple. The ball drops, it then drops and then just falls right into the left. And this is incredible. This is, you know, like so incredible like to draw the correct line the model has to simulate how the ball interacts with each slope predict redirection angles and mentally run the trajectory forward and this is actually very close to how humans visualize real world motion which is a step toward embodied reasoning in ai and many benchmarks test text-based logic but this one tests the visual and physical reasoning which is something that humans do instinctively but ai often struggles with so it's pretty cool it's pretty cool that you know nano banana 2 is demonstrating an eternal model of the physical world predicting where the ball will physically go and look at gpt5 and nano banana 1 and you know most models cannot get this right even if you ask you know frontier models like claude it's pretty, pretty hard. Ignore the prompt at the bottom here. But Claude says that, you know, the ball, the ball is going to, you know, fall and eventually going to end up in the middle container. And I mean, it's very easy to see the ball just falls and ends up in the container on the left. So for me, Nano Banana 2 is a remarkable step. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Google announces some, you know, huge robotics breakthrough or some, you know, foundation model for robotics that's just, you know, has these world models in there. Um, and yeah, surprising stuff, but really good.